It was all a dream. I used to watch JBC. I know me they are street kicks TV. I just a black ghetto youth like me. You can be anything that you wanna be, yeah. Here me no man a tamal the day out of the slum king. I may represent for street kicks TV entertainment. Oh, Taddy Slum, Street Kicks, Ghana Road, you know how. From here, the voice you don't know, say, I'm just sunny now. Representing for Street Kicks TV Entertainment, you don't know, you know. We have real friends, but we have some fake ones too. Yo, you don't know, it's Tiny Boost, eh? You feel me? Straight out of Peck now, S1. Alright, now you're locked to a Street Kicks TV. You already know the hottest, you already know. Oh, really good. Yeah. Hello, my energy empire. How is everybody doing? You already know it's your girl, Miss Keeks. Shouts out to my new subscribers. For those who don't know, you are listening to Miss Keeks live on Street Keeks TV. This channel is dedicated to hip hop and R&B and urban culture. This is the come up stories. And right now, this is the entertainment reports for today. So we have da, 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 one of my favorite. I'm not even going to tell you the surprise I'm just going to drop the rhythm first Pause it and come back I do as I want I do as I like I don't watch face I don't be no one What do you mean to be an independent artist to you? Um, I mean it really just boils down to, to ownership Yes we have Little Sims today and Little Sims has recently won the BET Hip Hop Award for Best International Flow, which we was all proud of her in the UK. So shouts out to Little Sims for that. But we are going to get straight into it because, as you know, it's the come up stories. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in and thank you for everybody who's been supporting previously. So Little Sims is a hip hop urban artist now her story is very impressive because her creative skills honestly i have to say women we are doing it for this generation but nevertheless before i get straight into it i have to drop it back in sometimes i might be introvert there's a war inside i hear battle cries mothers burying sons young boys playing with guns the devils are like a and as this month is Black History Month, it's only right we celebrate a black queen who has done well for the culture. So nevertheless, I'm just going to run it back because, you know, when it comes to Little Sims, her story is honestly, I have to say, shouts out to Little Sims. Shouts out to Little Sims for all of her achievements and accomplishments that she has done so far and she has yet to go. But for this story, this is definitely a big one. And as her music is within the cultural aspects of black history, honestly, this episode here, Energy Empire, see when you've listened and you finish watching it, just put our respect it. Yes, my energy empire. So we're just going to get straight into it. So that was Little Sims performing live at the BBC. So you can check the full clip out. I will put in the description below. But let's just get straight into it. Little Sims, as I was saying, is a female hip hop urban artist from the UK. She originates from Islington, which is an area in North London. Now, Little Sims' story is very interesting and it's very creative in the aspect of the directions and steps that she has taken to actually formulate her career now little sims has actually started doing music through dance which she started at a young age from what i found out through the research she started around about nine and then in music why she professionally developed herself around about 13 14 while she worked towards becoming the star that she was today now little sims was known to go into a youth club which is called saint mary's which was not far from her local community now this was a youth club that helped her to grow confidence in her performance skills as she was very interested in 
poetry for influences now little sims was always known to having a skill for rapping she decided that she was going to actually take the step of doing music on a professional basis one of the things that little sims had spoken about in a few of her interviews was that she enjoyed living in london she enjoyed actually being a british citizen and she enjoyed the fact that where she came from it was a diverse multicultured community so she considered it to be like family where she came from but she also spoke on the avenues and the aspects of the struggles that happened within the communities and things that had been taken away that would have made the area for sure of having places for black people who were interested in creative arts to actually put their skills and perfections to use so before i get any further thank you for being here like comment share and subscribe and shouts out to my new subscribers and i'm just going to show you a snippet of where i'm coming from when it comes to little sims canada.com here with the one and only Little Sims. Peace, peace. Little Sims, tell the people what's going on with you. Hello, um, I go by the name of Little Sims. I'm 20 years old. I'm from London, England. Here, Toronto, Canada. Just performed for my first time at Baltic Avenue. And yeah, it was good, man. It was a good show. In my energy empire, that was a highlight of Little Sims when she was in her prime stages at the Canadian Music Week, having an interview done by <laughs> a hip-hop um commentator which the interview that he had with little sims was actually amazing so i am definitely going to show you some highlights within this but referring back to little sims live story on the come up now it wasn't easy for little sims when she was coming up because the type of music that she was making and the ground that she was trying to break because as you can see from the type of lyrics that she makes and the sound types and choices she is very spiritual she's very intellectual she's very adventurous and she's very introverted at the same time so she has a lot of different dialogues when she puts her lyrical content out there not only that she is very cultural and she is a person who is into her black history and knows who she is as a woman so when you think about the type of music that she was making you can see it's obvious why it was hard for her to crack the grounds as an ind independent artist started doing music when i was nine and then I, st I started off acting and dancing and kind of wanted to explore different elements of performing arts, so I got into music and been doing it ever since. I started, started taking it more a bit more seriously when I was about 14. I'm 19 today. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> and... Break the cycle. Fuck your title when you're cold and the rest cry. Another story here for the headlines. Love be my destiny. And in that, because it is me, it is my identity, and there is a new wave of young people that are coming up and that are looking to me, so I just want to make sure I represent right and inspire if I can. Yes, my energy empire, and in saying so, so for someone who was very outspoken in their lyrics but very introverted in their persona, it goes to show you how when you put aside your characteristics and you use your voice of expression how you can lead yourself into a destination or a force field surrounding your true abilities now this is very impressive because in an interview when little sims is asked about black history she expresses herself very well and the thing is you can definitely see that when she's making her claims to what she believes in for her identity it is the truth in the case scenario because she represents it through her physical appearance she represents it through her lyrics and also possibly she represents it through personal things that she does outside for people who are in her presence and daily lifestyle to know how she accumulates herself so when you think about her lyrically as an artist the creative avenues and directions that she's taken to present her career today is impressive because from acting to dancing to rapping to poetry and just swinging around within all the creative elements she's been able to put visions into her 
vision board itself like the visionary that she's come with through her music videos shows culture shows roots the lyrics that she puts forward to us also shows how she means when she says that she wants to break barriers and inspire and get people to think now i really appreciated that about her because when you listen to the type of sound that she had and then you think about how hard it was for her as an independent artist when she was going around trying to get people to take her on board she speaks about this later on in the interview coming up but as just to cover when she was speaking about it was very interesting to hear because knowing that you have a voice you believe in yourself you're working towards it and you have a creative team behind you that helps to push your agenda and ideas out there but at the same time we know when you have that finance to put your vision to the best advantage that you can, that is a big stepping stone which most independent artists need. So when you think about the fact of being knocked down, told multiple times that no, you're not suited for the requirements because of the type of branding that you may have or the type of lyrics that you may portray, is a very serious thing. And that's something that in the hip hop genre, we have fought for today to be able to have the voice of freedom expression. So just going also, on to say, Black I want to shout Month out to Little Sims soon. on that. You're and also that a lot of for me, when I put Little Sims aside, I am um, going to say that well, for Black History, means Black History, History me, Month, when know, it comes to the big um, icons that have contributed Nigerian to the culture today, for the females, you know, I'm going kind with of Harriet teach Tubman, me a lot about my tell culture, you why. speaking to me in the language, so I'm very rooted and deeply connected to it. And the reason and why I think I'm going with Harriet music, Tubman to is because put Harriet as much Tubman as, that, as, as I believed can in that in because it is me, it's God, my identity, faith, and freedom. And the fact that she believed in those three things, it led her to be able to bring herself to freedom and then free multiple people. So when I think about Harriet Tubman, I think about all the things that as a black woman we've had to fight for and struggle for today just to be who we are as individuals and when i think about where little sims comes from with roots culture and just defining history for black people she definitely deserves to be in the position that she's in and i am very proud of her and i hope all my supporters are proud of her too so nevertheless i'm just going to get straight back into it because every direction that she has taken herself to has presented results and has found her in a position of where she's found her peace and her joy. And at the age of what Little Sims is at to where she started from when she was developing her music, the previous interview that I showed you, she was 19. The secondary one, she was 20. Now, she's at another mature age in her life where she's still growing and developing and when she was in the prime stages she had already done performances with miss dynamite chip ghetto tiny and dubs wretch these are some people who are heavy hitters she also had spoken about her influences which was people like biggie tupac lauren hill your jay-z's your kanye's your kendrick lamar's schoolboy q one thing she did say is that she is very diverse when it comes to listening to music. She goes with what's her feeling and her momentum at the time. So there was some other names that I didn't mention as yet. I will mention them later on. But just listening to her journey is so impressive. And the fact that when you look at her catalogue, you could see how upfront she was, confident she was, determined she was as a young woman. And the fact that she's seen the results and she still remained her independency and she still has a team that pushes her beyond the limits that she can go to while she's able to keep control. You have to show gratitude to that because it's not easy, especially when you have the pressure of labels not wanting to sign you and being told multiple times that no that you're not basically wanted and it's hard when that hits because you don't have no other choice but to say to yourself okay you're just gonna push it and keep believing in yourself and doing what you have to do and you have to appreciate her for that because even in the snippet in the introduction that I gave to you when I do drop it you're gonna hear the full take of where she explains it in her terminology and 
I just want to say shouts out to everyone who's here still and thank you for watching. I wrap up, yeah. but you are also a bit of a dab hand at everything else by the uh -huh. sound of it. Acti acting rather? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I act, I started acting before I'd done music actually, and then I wanted to explore different elements yeah. of performing arts, so I got into poetry. Okay. Um, then that transformed into like flows and melodies, and which then transformed into rapping, and, yeah. <laughs> and then I picked up instruments and. You perform with quite a lot of people by the sound of it. Big, big industry names that are out there already, and you're only 18, so I, I, who? Like, give us some names, give us some names. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to. Miss Dynamite? Yeah, Dynamite, yeah. Chip, uh, Wombats, Lion Club, Get, Tiny, N Dubs. Um, wretch, oh, everyone. Though. So that's going off. That's going off the ten. That's off the two hand scale already. So she's got a lot more to come. Who would you like to collab with in the future, or or even perform with? Not necessarily collab. Um, I definitely like to perform with a rapper called Schoolboy Q. Right. And Kendrick Lamar. I don't know if you've heard of them. I haven't. I'm guilty. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then obviously like your Jay Zs and Kanyes and yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Lauren Hill. That would be kind of awesome. Who do you look up to in the industry? Lauren Hill. Yeah, Lauren Hill. Yeah, definitely Lauren. And, uh, yeah, that's who inspires me. That's, yeah, as well as life and my surroundings and people around me. And at such a young age, she has performed with all these great legends in the grime hip-hop industry in the UK. If you don't know about them, you're going to go and have to research them after. I might highlight a few because honestly, when it comes to the grime scene, hip hop in the UK, there were some names that she called that. At such a young age, you know, the bars and the lyrical content that she was coming with was steady ready. So in real life, you have to shout out to that one. And even when she talks Lauren Hill, Nas, Neo Souls, her influences, Angie Stone, Erica Badu, Jill Scott. She also mentioned that she liked um, James Blake, Missy Elliott and Busta Rhymes for creative avenues. She called a lot of names. Like she even highlighted Kano, Stormzy. So, you know, like when she goes on in her list, like these are people that she knows her stuff. She's very in tune with herself and she has the talent. So even when she dropped the Still in Wonderland, that was in 2016. These interviews that I'm showing you are previous when she was more at a youthful stage. And she had done a lot of work in such a small space of time, even though it wasn't in a small space of time. Because then as an artist, whenever you find that you get um, the recognition that you deserve, it's always longer to you than how it may seem to other people. So shouts out to Little Sims on that. But definitely before she even dropped The Still in Wonderland, she had already dropped four mixtapes. And all of this work, what she's putting in is independent. And the fact that she believed in herself, you can just see the fight that she would have had because listening to her flow and style of lyrics from then till now she's very conscious but she's very controversial and she means when she says she's breaking barriers and putting people to think so nevertheless let me just get straight into it and thank you energy empire for tuning in make sure you like comment share subscribe tell a friend where's it happening street keeks tv and shouts out to all the snippets that i've used i am going to give them a highlight but for now Big up Certified UK because those takes was definitely good. And one thing with Little Sims, the fact that she is very introverted. When it comes to interviews, it's there's they're there. But at the same time, the ones that you need, these are the prominent ones. Because this is giving you a taster of who she was and who she has become. So let's just get straight back into it. 
important question. What does it mean to be an independent artist to you? Um, I mean, it really just boils down to, to ownership, you know, and like, I, I suppose also really having a, a vision and, and seeing it through in the way that I kind of want to do it, you know what I'm saying? Of course, have an amazing team that helped facilitate it and that, you know, help bring all my crazy ideas to life, but just really like having something in my head and following that through um, is the best thing and just being able to have control and it's not been the easiest journey at all. Um, and I definitely, when I was starting, didn't plan to be an independent artist. It was just the situation. I wasn't really getting label interest. And so I just decided, all right, cool, let's let's take the stairs then. And T-Dot, yo, this girl is ridiculous on the mic. Please do it do it for the T-Dot. Do it for us. Quick 16 off the top. I'm a visionary, get the ads of the self game, money gang niggas up there, they can see a little bit of them in me, roll trees, I'm a young Steve Jobs, when I get to 21 I'm gonna be handing out jobs and that ain't even a lot compared to what I'm really about to do, I dig it to ever wanna stop me, nah, no, never give me that title, I'll make it better. Heavily inspired by a lot of um, neo-soul artists, I'm very into Lionel Eric Abadu, um, Lil Wayne, um, Andy Stone, um, I love Joe Scott, um, which is funny even though I'm a rap artist, it's, yeah. it sort of expect me to sing, but um, Move we'll away, peace, Lord. I'm a prawn. Now my last name means count money. Can you pronounce it? Just to take away one message from my music, just be yourself. It's fine. It's okay to to be vulnerable. I don't think that makes you weak, I think that makes you strong. Story. This is our fate, this is our kingdom, this is our place, this is our freedom. Cut off them chains, this is our struggle, this is our energy empire. So as little Sims continued to grow and develop herself, before she released the Still in Wonderland album, as mentioned before, she had dropped the four mixtapes. This will be what they was waiting on from me. This will be the realest story that I've ever told. This will be the bright slide that you ever seen. This will be the finest. Energy Empire. So as little Sims continue to grow and develop herself, before she released the Still in Wonderland album, as mentioned before, she had dropped the four mixtapes. Just in between that, she had won two MOBO award wins, which was a good look. And then she continued to develop herself. Most of the projects that Little Sims done was, as I said, done independently, even though she has a team behind her to give her the support. The greatest thing about Little Sims catalogue is that it's balanced across multiple things, which she believes yourself. is her like, voice where do you, where do you implementing you freedom of speech. This current climate of UK hip hop, which is currently very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and internationally, people are paying more attention than ever. Again. So the Drop 6 EP that I just highlighted for you, that track playing in the blue screen is One Life, I Might Live It, and the performance just before that was Wings of the Curious Tale of Trials. It was gonna be so make sure you go you check that with out. Major, that you were like, and no, also this is offensive I, I for those who are familiar, then you're already aware of that, but if you don't know, um, that's no, off the Sometimes I Might Be like, Introvert album. Said to myself, so like, just to say, that, being listening to what she's saying, that's why it's important to believe in yourself do, and never sell yourself short for what you know you have greater potential to be because most of the times when you have a vision and you have a dream you want it to be done in such a way and then you think to yourself fast thinking and you just make certain steps where you think to yourself okay this is the course of nature but sometimes you have to slow down take a back step and think is this really going to serve me the purpose for the greater good in what i see and what is best suited to me so shouts out to little sims on that because she was dropping some gems and this interview is big not only so she was one of the first females to appear on the Forbes list on the top 30s list, which that was a good look because I even saw an interview on it. I would have loved to present it here. What I will do is drop the link because due to copyright issues, we have got no time for that and we like to keep things professional. But continuing on, BBC introducing definitely played a part in Little Sim's career. So we have to shout out to the BBC introducing because one thing they are good in supporting our culture on a come up and pushing them forward into the limelight of media.
So the interview is with Peter Rosenberg from Hot 97 and he's speaking with Little Sims about how she's feeling within fitting in with the UK hip hop sector and the US hip hop sector. And most of her interviews, as you can see, some of them were done in America as her booking agent is American. But also some of her interviews have been in England, but not all of them are highlighted here due to copyright issues. But if you do want to see those very important ones also, then I'll drop the link for you or I'll probably do a review on it. But when Little Sims is talking about her biggest accomplishments and her fitting into what she thinks is her sound her simple answer was just being herself and taking control of her music and then she goes on to expressing why it's important to her and why she's grateful for the outlook that she takes when it comes to making her movements within business as an artist i'm gonna rap for a little bit obviously but when the shit drops i need you to lose it so I don't wanna hurt you, I just wanna feel Paranoia thoughts, every finger thoughts How you better sure in the midst of a murder scene I end up on You endorse whatever you feed to you And of course your support will only deceive people when it's forced You believe whatever you breathe coming from a source I'm ashamed you didn't know better, in fact I'm a Can you blame the innocent, never only when I fall I'm rambling, no one's challenging, maybe I'm going to get some I'm panic and scrabble, if you're ready to get those I'm doing the hurry, but I'm like, hey, hey Are you ever trying to stop to me, I'm ready to do It's your first Brit Award? Uh, yeah, it's my first Brit Award as well. How's it going so far? So you guys here representing gorillas tonight? Yes, we are. Most certainly. Self-loving, need more self-loving. That's how it goes. They wanna know you when you're buzzing. The first things first, number one, and priority. Yes, my energy empire, as I was saying. So from little Sims going from the ages of 14 to 21, practically making decisions towards working to build her foundation to music as an independent artist because she found herself not finding positions where labels was wanting to sign her is a good look for the fact that she kept on pushing and she continued to prosper in the direction that she was going. The funniest thing is about Little Sims' background of history and music is she was the person who had a creative style. That's why in the earlier stages I mentioned she was very adventurous because when it comes to her creative avenue and direction, she always dibbles and dabbles a bit in a lot of different things which is always good because it helps you to grow your it helps you to grow your creative perspective so when you think about that now little sims had spoken about not having a musical background sorry in her family so when i thought about that it was crazy to see how the development and the way she expresses herself has led to so much empowerment across her lyrics because she did state that her family was very knowledgeable and had a good ear for listening to music, but taking part as professionals in the music industry was not a part of their foundation. So to see that she broke a generation within her family is a good look. And also to know that just before all of these practical things that she had done, she actually got her recognition when she became, where she became more recognised now she got recognition as a breakthrough artist in the beginning stages at the ages of 21 which from 14 to 21 you could see the journey that she would have had and the impact that it would have put on her because as mentioned before Lil Sims is a conscious rapper but she challenges us as individuals to free thinking the way that she also puts controversy into her lyrics when she's discussing specified topics that means a lot to her purpose of lifestyle choices within the creative industries and also as a person of individuality so just to reference back when i think about her saying that the Lauren Hill album, The Miseducation, was something that really inspired her to put her mind into thinking about music and understanding who she was and just developing herself within the creative aspects of her art was very impressive because you see the show where she is performing with Stormzy and Kano, that actually comes when she's getting recognised 
after she's actually taken part for the gorillas tour which the gorillas tour was a big thing because that was what introduced her to being able to have an appearance on the brit awards red carpet ceremony which she explains in an interview that how she actually met the gorillas was through kano which kano is a big rapper in the grime hip-hop industry and for those who have watched top boy then you are aware that kano is sully and if you haven't seen it make sure you go and check out top boy many people right now might also be aware of the fact that the latest series has been promoted and taken over by drake so if you're following that you would have seen that drake had posted about top boy so little sims is in top boy and also kano is in top boy so cross-referencing back to what i was saying when little sims is talking about how she met um the gorillas to be able to take part of their show it was very interesting because it was just a coincidence that right time right place talent things just happen how it was supposed to happen the show that she actually did with kano and stormzy was at the roundhouse rising festival my energy empire thank you for staying with me so as we are wrapping up i just wanted to correct that statement in regards to when i said taken over by drake what i should have said because i know words can be misconstrued is that drake is a part of the promotion as he is now one of top boys latest executive producers for the latest series that's come out and also just to say as well i'm just going to drop some more of the interview of little sims where she actually speaks and elaborates more on how her introduction to the industry was important for her at the time of when she got her recognition um, and i also I will be highlighting Damon, Damon a few Robert more additional really songs from her just so you can get to understand a little bit more of her as little sims journey is very big and i couldn't drop everything and, here um, but what i will do is for those who are interested if you hit me or drop it in a comment section i will release that exclusive way, things that i didn't like release here happened organically mm. like it was public knowledge that i'm an unstoppable force been already won the battle now come that little so energy empire one of the things what was really good about little sims is as she was speaking about the gorillas interview there's more of the interview which i couldn't put here so i will drop the link for you she expressed how she was getting the recognition from doing that show which she knew to herself that not everyone is going to know her but she's still going to gain fans and she still kept a positive mindset and she still pushed herself so knowing that she had the confidence and ability to be self-aware from such a young age is very impressive for someone who is pushing herself as an artist because that is the root of creative aspects that she believes herself best to be in. And the thing is, Little Sims is known to acting, as I mentioned before, which in our country, in the UK, she has taken part in quite a few shows which one of the popular ones was a show on e4 which was youngers i'm not sure but if you're not aware you can go and have a look at that if you're in the uk if possibly i might do a review on it because it was an actual good series but just to mention as i was saying so the fact that she started off with the acting and then she changed into more creative avenues it shows the potential and the determination that she had as a rising artist because dropping four eps four mixtapes then releasing four albums is a big deal because the first album that's one i'm going to talk about specifically that one was a very impressive album and as i mentioned to you before little sim's style of lyrics is conscious but is very controversial so when she's speaking about topics or expressing herself she's giving you lyrics where you have to sit there and think to yourself okay this is her expressing some real life events or some real life series of traumas or things that she would have witnessed through peers or through just life or just witnessing through just reading other knowledge of aspects. It's hard to talk about something that I don't believe in L-O-V-E, can you tell me what's the meaning? I've been dreaming. How the fuck was you that deceitful? I didn't see it. Hard for me to...
So that was a good look for Little Sims. And not only that, A Curious Tale of Trials was the first album before she did the Still in Wonderland. Now, that album definitely was a big deal also because it showed a lot of her self-expression and her creativity. And the thing is about it, Dead Bodies and Wings is definitely a song that people should go and listen to because definitely her expression, you could see the controversialness and you could also see the self-expression of Little Sims as an artist. And referring back to her previous interviews, if you had listened, she would have spoken about the type of music that she tries to make when she's just trying to be herself within her creativity. Not only that, when you think about her moving from Still in Wonderland to her second album, The Grey Area, Precious, Boss, Wound, Selfish, Therapy, these are all big songs which also defines the same perspective. Then when you get on to her last album, which is Sometimes I Might Be Introvert, that one grew a lot of success. And just leading from the grey area to Sometimes I Might Be Introvert is what actually gave Little Sims the opportunity to win the Mercury Prize winner in 2021, not forgetting all the other awards that she has won prior to this time. So Little Sims being determined and knowing that I may not have a label support behind me, but I'm still going to push my visuals. I'm still going to put my lyrics out there and put my projects out there. She has to get a lot of credit for that because it's not easy when you're starting from such a young age and you're just taking on the whole world of music. Still nobody handed me a dream, I had to chase it I had to be business-minded and put aside my feelings I had to find my own truth, my own meanings Wrote this in the same picture